Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> hey, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas yesterday and had fun shipping all of the stuff that gathered from over the weekend. I know we did. I am joined by Rod, my co-host, Picking and Punching, and below us, they have been on before. We have Carrie from American Arbitrage and his other half. <laughs> Lady Arbitrage, Miss Dawn, Hello. and I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and they'll be post. Yes, Dalton is here too. He went to get his own drink because I have a caffeinated drink, and I said he's not having any of mine. So he will he will be back. He went to get his own uncaffeinated beverage. So let me make Carrie big, and then we'll get to your questions. Here's Carrie. Hey everybody, I'm I'm Carrie. If you don't know who I am, I'm American Arbitrage. I've been a reseller for 13 years in March. So almost 13 years. I've had a brick and mortar. I've, I've done it all. I've done it all. And I've been doing content for the last uh, four years, four years doing TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and everywhere else. And yes, yeah, so if you want to see what I do, check those out. And uh, I sell a lot of sports cards and sports stuff and pop culture, basically. And did it? Perfect. And dipped it. Yes, I'm on dipped it, guys. Check out dipped oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, dipped it. Commonwealth picker said I legally have to mention dipped it. <laughs> so dipped it.com. Yes, dipped it.com. All right, here's Dawn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dawn. I'm a lady arbitrage on, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. I don't do YouTube yet. Um, I've been a reseller since 2012. I've had a brick and mortar as well. Uh, my favorite things is like uh, vintage Flushes, toys, and mid-century modern. Perfect. Yeah, so Carrie, we started at the same time. I started in December 2019 yep, making I content. Started. That would be friggin' amusing. Like, that would, seriously, that would be so amusing if Dalton took Rod's place. I don't know if you guys <laughs> want to hear what... he He's like an one. old soul. He's like a... He, he, <laughs> His advice would be pretty funny, I think, actually. So hopefully everybody had a good Christmas. I've been sick for a week. I'm feeling a little better. I'm coughing like crazy, of course, soon as we come on. So I disappear a lot tonight. That is why I can't stop coughing. Um, but yeah. So Lawrence has the first question. And he he it's a true or false. So this will be really easy. You really know you're into reselling when you get more excited over the bubble wrap and the empty box than the gift. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You save everything true. and you reuse everything. Save money. Definitely true. Reuse it. Reuse it. Dawn, yeah. Dawn has used like packaging from the U we're not supposed to say it from USPS before. Because we know we're gonna use it afterwards to ship stuff. So just save on packaging costs for Christmas, right, Dawn? Yep. So this Allegedly. little secret, yeah, okay. little secret I, that I'm glad my wife doesn't watch this show because I actually get less mad at her now for all the Amazon packages that show up to my house and the money she spends <laughs> because I know that I'm going to be able to use these boxes Please, and all the, all the things, especially around the holiday time. So, but I don't tell don't her. Don't you need to buy so something cool. big, honey? I need yes. a big box. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because my mother in law resells as well. So we do most of our present opening at Brad's aunt and his mom is like taking all the tissue paper out of everybody's gifts. She's like, I need this. Yeah. We, we kept all the boxes yeah. and moved them out here today. We, we use most, most of them are already gone. We had a lot to pack up today. So for me, true as well. My Amazon comes, I'm like, yes, that'll fit this perfectly. I'm like super happy because we get like our cat food and dog food, just a tip and toilet paper and paper towels. And you get like amazing, nice, big Amazon boxes that would cost you like five bucks to buy. Just FYI. Oh Dalton is back. All right. Miss Kelly said a buyer opens a return request for an INAD manufacturer error. The wrong item was in the box. I issued a full refund telling them to keep it and they return it anyway and I get charged. Is there any recourse to recoup the shipping money? I'm trying to see if I can follow that completely. So probably not since you sent the wrong item, right? I don't think you could recoup the shipping charge back. That would be my guess. Um, I would just eat it, move on. It's a lesson learned. We all learn it. I'm not sure. I, I could be wrong on that. Don, you probably don't know that one either. 
I don't. I I would just say lesson learned on it as well. If and just move on, yeah. Yeah. So I think the problem with some of these is if people have free free returns on. So if you have a free return on, they can just open a return whenever without having to contact you. And, you know, even if you issued a refund before and try to get ahead of it, the buyer still can just open up a return and just return the item. Yeah. So yeah. If okay. you, when they open the return, if you, if they open the return and it says they did, if you say, give the buyer a full refund, eBay should not allow them to ship the item back because there's a clause in there and this has happened to people who wanted their item back. They didn't realize like if they gave them the refund, it wouldn't come back. When you, I would, I would contact eBay for business on Facebook because when you say issue them a full refund, eBay says you will not get the item back and should not like let that label go. As soon as the, you have to catch it fast Mm. But normally, when you accept the return, it says they opened a the return first, then I refunded. They shipped it anyway. The ear was a manufacturing ear, not mine. Oh. So my question would be: Did they ship it with an eBay label, and that's how you got charged? Because eBay typically will say, like, they'll message them and say, "No need to send the item back. The seller's issued a refund." <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just yeah, I would contact them because I would say I issued a full refund on the return and did not want the item back. I don't think I should pay for shipping. Yes, they they're playing. Yeah. Me and Lucifer, Okay. Sapphire says, I just got my first negative feedback ever. The buyer wrote me asking for a return and left a ret uh, negative saying the shirt was worn out. I have free returns, wrote back and offered no response, how to proceed. And she wants to know, is there any way to get it removed if they don't return it? So I would ask, did they open it for item not as described because it was worn out? Or did they open it because they changed? Tell us what their reason was, because that has a lot to do if there's any way to get it removed. Typically, so, the way to, to get them removed or if there's some sort of feedback extortion or something like that, if it's just their opinion, whether it's right or wrong, it's their opinion. And eBay, from what at least I know, won't typically take it down. I will say this. I mean, when you're new, it hurts a little bit and you might not have as much feedback, but I wouldn't let it get you down too much. Uh, negative feedback, you know, as long as you're doing things right, doesn't happen that much. Um, and a lot of times you can respond to these people you can message them and tell them you're willing to make it right and they'll take it down like they, they will revise it for you so here's the thing they didn't open it so you won't have that that protection if they don't open a return for the top rated seller but from what i heard they are more picky about what they will take off mm-hmm so just be beware of that. I would say one good thing, though, think about this, is a lot of people that leave negative feedback is in the heat of the moment. I usually, mm -hmm. if someone does leave me negative feedback, I usually wait to the next day to respond. It's just like if you get in a uh, you know, fight with your, you know, your partner or, or something like that where your guys are upset. And then, you know, my, my wife's the type of person that just, if I give her space, then she calms down and things are cool. So I figure a lot of buyers are the same, same thing. They're excited to get this item. They're waiting days to get it. They open it. Then they're just angry and they leave you negative feedback. But if you reach out the next day and let them know you're a small business that, you know, this does hurt. You're willing to do whatever you do to make up for it. I've had times where a lot of people have been cool about it and had, had, they were able to remove it themselves, you know. So just something to keep in mind. I would try to reach out to them again, though. Yeah. So Rosie in the middle says you can ask for a revision request. Be very very careful about that because you only get to ask one time and it's only open for 24 hours so if that buyer's not responding to you i would not open that because it's gonna expire and if they don't see it till two days later then they can't revise it so i wouldn't send the revision unless the buyer's responding to you just yeah, be very right. careful because it times out and you only get one shot at it 
another about negative. Is everybody getting negative feedback? <laughs> Ping G wants to know, um, do you reply to negative feedback uh, when it's left that you offer free returns if you do? I, I think it's a good practice in general to respond to all your negative feedbacks because I always look at it as like a forum to, to the people coming. I don't think a lot of people check your feedback as much as they used to 10, 15, 20 years ago. But the people who do, you can actually go in there and say, you know, we do offer free returns for any reason. We're sorry there was an issue. Maybe you didn't get a hold of us, but, you know, happily send it back and we'll fix it. You know, it's a good time to show people that you're willing, that you're easy to work with and and um, it probably won't hurt you that. But honestly, I mean, I, I don't think too much about negatives in general. If there is an issue, you get a negative, correct it, and, and you should be able to avoid it. But some people are just sometimes just going to leave you a negative. No matter what yeah, you, that, that actually happened to us. Happen. That happened to us recently, actually, and we tried to take care of it before they even <sighs> left the feedback and said you can return it and we'll give you a full refund. And then they, it, this person actually ordered two <sighs> items at the yeah. same time. It was two different sports cards, and they left us negative feedback on both. And there was two yeah, separate separately. things. Just because, and I don't even know why, because we offered full. We even said free. Re, we'll pay for it. And they they still did it, and then yeah. said some we we explained to them several times via message that, that we'll it. return it, and then they didn't want to return it. So there's nope. sometimes you can't please people, and it's really thankfully you know we do a lot of a lot of a lot of sales, so that doesn't really affect us too much. And I would just I would try to take that energy, the the negative feeling you get from getting those negatives, and and list a couple extra items on eBay that night and get some sales going and, and use it for a positive. So I was actually thinking about this today. This is not going wood when I say this. Hope I don't jinx myself. But this is the first Christmas year I have not got a negative feedback. All my negative feedback always comes in the fourth quarter every single year. So for all the people in the chat who keep you know asking comments about negative feedback, it's more common in the fourth quarter than any other time because people are more anxious, waiting on presents. Uh, there's delays to the postal service. There's delays to UPS. Packages get damaged, broken. I mean, it's it just a, a lot of things outside of your control of it. And then human error. You know, we're all human. We make mistakes. We ship the wrong item, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, you just got to take in the with a grain of salt and try to do whatever you can. But I, I respond to every single negative and neutral comment on there. I will reach out to the buyer um, because I do think they do impact you, especially if you're a new seller. Not so much if, if you're doing a high volume. It's it's a numbers game. You're, you're going to have negative feedback over time. Um but I just, I respond to all of them, so. Yeah, and I respond, I had somebody leave positive feedback with a negative comment last week, and I responded to that one. Even though it's positive, they, like, what they said was not very positive, and I'm glad they left a positive, but I responded to that as well. Um, and one of the things I always put is that I do free returns. Like, look, if you're not happy, we have free seller paid 30 day returns. You're welcome to return it if you'd like to reach out. And I think that kind of lets people know they didn't reach out, you know, in like a nice way um, without being like, hey. Um, yeah, so I, I would definitely put that if you offer it. Russell wants to know if we're having cake and cookies. I don't have any cake or cookies wish <laughs> i have twix so we got this i got this candy cane twix thing for christmas no, oh that's cool this. yeah and it has like six twix in it we took two out and it was half gone already <laughs> so we got ripped off by twix mars corporation <laughs> for us to... it's the candy cane that costs Seriously. i've had too much cake and cookies i've been in a dive i'm done with talking talk for the last 48 hours i feel like so <laughs> All right, Siggy wants to know if eBay will ever get back to normal. What do you um, mean by normal? I don't really feel like it's not normal right now, honestly. I, it's Seriously, that's how I feel. I've always noticed this parallel on eBay. When I'm listing consistently, I'm getting sales consistently. When I'm not listing consistently, I'm not getting sales consistently. Every single time. Me and Don probably for like at the start of this month, weren't posting as much as we had been because we were busy um sales slowed down we started focusing a lot more of it more on it like around the eighth or ninth which yep. is too late but we did it and our sales went up so it happens every time i, I just think I, I know there's a lot of talk about algorithm stuff i'm not a huge believer in most of that i just like as far as like there being shortages and all outages or whatever i just think if you list consistency 
consistently the right stuff at the right price, you'll make money uh, in general. I have to agree with that. And I think when, when we're not listing like we should be, we see a change. And then when we do start listing again, it goes right back up. So the, the problem is, is getting yourself to do it. I know you got 20 million things going on with life in general, but you got to make time for it if you want to get the sales. That's, that's what I think. I think what's really skewed everything with, with eBay is you know, the pandemic. The pandemic was, was an outliner, you know, pretty much where everything was super skewed, like sports cards, collectibles, video games, everything was going up. I mean, people are, are complaining now that the graded market's down, comic books, sports cards, but what people don't understand is it's still up now than it was before the pandemic. So that sure. was just a giant jump up there, and it was a drastic jump, and it had to correct. So the market does correct. And uh, I think everyone thinks that eBay is not normal, but I think this is the new norm. You know, people just need to understand that what we, we are experiencing now is the what is normal for eBay. eBay has more competition now than it did five to ten years ago. So there's other platforms to sell on. And I think Don and Carrie hit the nail on the head that you got to be consistent. You, eBay is one of those things where, you know, what you put in is what you get. You know, the more love and the more stuff that you're, you're putting, more work you put in, the more that eBay is going to love you back. There's more knowledge available now than ever. Yeah. I remember when I started this 13 years ago, 12 and a half years ago, there was like two people doing YouTube videos on this. Yeah. And I, <laughs> anything they said, I was grasping on, trying to learn. And now there's there's every, every style, so every niche. There's so many people. Whatever you want to get into, if you want to get into Funko Pops and be the best Funko Pop seller, you can figure it out. And it's beautiful. It's really a, a great time to be reselling, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. We even have guys selling dollar sports cards. I have a yeah. YouTube channel gets thousands totally of views. Waste of time. <laughs> waste of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would agree it's normal right now as well. I would it's more important than ever to check the sell-through rate. Be very, very cognizant of how many are listed, how many have sold. Put the time in. We were, and we were talking about this backstage a little bit before we came on. My eBay was all the way down to five thousand dollars a month, and now it's back up to close to twenty thousand. With popular items, I got all the boxes. Those have amazing sell-through rates, and listing consistently twenty to fifty items a day. So you really get out of it what you're putting in, and I would say whatever you want to sell list that if you want a hundred dollars a day make sure you're listing a hundred dollars a day whether it's one item or ten make sure if you're wanting the results make sure you're putting in what you're wanting out of it would be a really important thing tucker and ryan tucker and or ryan <laughs> from tucker's treasures sent a dollar 99 super chat and said merry christmas love you all we love you too we need to get these guys That's scheduled awesome. back on too for next year for sure Ryan message me. I'm assuming Ryan's watching too. Ryan message me. And I here, I'll give Tuck I'll give Tucker Rod. I'll give Tucker Rod. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Until next time. So speaking about getting, you know, putting in what you get out. So during FlipCon, uh, Tucker and Ryan, Ryan's had a long conversation with me about whatnot, about how you know, they they did a couple of whatnots. They're, they've been struggling a little bit on there, stuff of like that. And uh, they, you know, we had a long conversation. And they started to double down on whatnot, and they they are doing a whatnot now every single day over Christmas break because he's out of school. And I want his whatnot today. He had over two hundred people at one point in time doing whatnot. So, guys, if you're not following Tucker on whatnot, Tucker's Treasures, go check him out. It is it's fun. You'd see him on there selling all kind of crazy things, and he's in the storage unit category. And he's killing it now. So good job, Tucker. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. And it really depends. I've taken a little hiatus off of whatnot. Um, I did a knickknacks sale last week, and they everybody really liked the jewelry. So I'll probably do another knickknack sale this week with jewelry. Um, I just got in some. Uh, actually, look, I can show this. I don't know if I'm brave enough to put this on there, but this amazing Sterling Zuni bolo tie. Probably about a five hundred dollar bolo. I just got this in today. Um, yeah, it's it's an awesome, awesome. It was with the Lisa Frank stuff, the same estate as the Lisa Frank stuff. Um, and but I'll be I'll be back, but probably not as frequently. I, I might. I'm not gonna never say never, but 
I'm definitely going to probably be doing one knickknack show a week. I, I think you, if you get burnt out, do something else and you can always come back. Like I came back to eBay and eBay has rebounded beautifully, you know? So if you have different pots that you're, you know, cooking in, you can always give one more attention than the other and go back to the other if, if you need to for whatever, you know, whatever reason. Um, Rosie said, yesterday I received an email from eBay stating they canceled an order due to concerns mm -hmm. about fraud from the buyer. Has anyone encountered this situation? If so, how do you respond? That happened to two of our items today, right, Don? I don't, yeah, I don't understand. We got it. Does that mean that they, because we've never had that before, does that mean they took the money? Are they I'm, took I'm the a money little bit back that paid too. us for the yeah, item? I'm a little confused oh. by it. Um, yeah, yeah, I've had it happen multiple times over the years. It's that the buyer's account got flagged. So if you did sell something, you've already shipped it, you're all covered. Yes. Uh, that buyer's going to get kicked off eBay. Their, their account got suspended. Um, or, or they something going on where they have too many, you know, red flags on their account. So you will be covered if you shipped out the item. If you, ha already, yes, if you haven't twice. shipped the item, then at this point in time, you're going to cancel those orders. Then you cancel it. Item. Yeah. But if you ship yeah, it out. You don't it's cancel done. it. It's still there. Yeah. So like eBay yeah, doesn't cancel it for you. you and what it. sucks is like I had two of them last week as well. And the funny thing is one of them, they were pestering the heck out of me in messages. I was actually glad <laughs> that I got that. I was like, yes. Um, but so if you've shipped it, you're covered. If you didn't cancel the order and relist the item. Um, it's got to happen. I only it's had a few. The holiday season, I imagine there's more scammers out there trying yeah, to, yeah. to steal, basically. A lot of times it comes from international where the, the, the account gets flagged because it's an international scammer who's trying to like, hack someone else's account or something along those lines. I've had that multiple times. but And that's times where I've shipped it and the items got delivered. And then I get the message after the item was delivered that this account's been fraudulent and nothing you can do just nothing to do but yeah you, know. you, you have your money so yeah. it's okay. yeah one of the two one of the two i think already has arrived and the other one yeah. shipped out so yeah yeah you're it covered but it is you fall yeah. you fall under seller protection so okay yeah otolali said oh my goodness what i got for christmas a consultation with you so i will tell you now that you have it your mom has been messaging me about that for months <laughs> um so your mom planned that out for you for months so yeah write your questions down and email me if you guys don't know i do consultations i do monthly coaching i don't talk about it a lot i don't do it a lot but i do do it um and her mom was like that's what her mom wanted was for her to get a consultation with me so just message me and I'm glad you were happy about it. Your mom was excited and I've never done a gift certificate, but I, I, I did it for her because that's what she, I figured it out. I figured it out. Thank you, Canva. All right. <laughs> Shabby Vintage Bell says tips to build a YouTube channel. Uh, there's, there's a cool video out there. It's by Roberto Blake called like a hundred bad or crappy videos or whatever i think is the title of it and that's really the key the key to growing your youtube is production it's producing video after video and sucking at it and you know i still kind of suck at it but i'm still producing the thing is it's consistency and as you're consistent each video it feels like to me at least you learn a little bit and you gain traction you go oh people reacted to this a lot of times if you notice in the reseller space people react to negative, you know, stuff like that. But also positives. Like one of your biggest videos ever, Kat, was like about, was it teacups? It was like super teacups positive. Teacups is what super made educated. my channel blow up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it could, it doesn't have to necessarily be negative either, but I mean, I, I cut my teeth on, on shorts. That's how I started and gained any traction was on TikTok and, and, you, and Instagram reels and stuff. And, and really YouTube's been a big struggle for me to try to figure out four years later, but it's be consistent. And if you know you want to do it, just say, okay, this year, 52 weeks, I'm putting out 52 videos. I don't care if they get one view. I don't care if they get a million views and try to get a little better each video. I don't know. I don't really do YouTube or long form. I've uh, grown on shorts, but I did take um, a hiatus for a couple of months. And when I came back, once I was consistent, they just started blowing up again. So consistency, definitely. I think consistency is really key to a lot of people. Um, but 
you know, you have to be consistent in with improvement. I think that's the thing that a lot of people leave out there. So your ultimate goal is every video you put out, you want to make it 1% better than your last video. And that could just be something, the title, the thumbnail, the lighting, the the, the production, the, the microphone. I mean, any little thing that you can do. So if you, every video you put out consistently, I put out two videos a week on my, my pick and punching channel every single day for the last year and a half. And I, and there is a little luck to it as well. I will tell you that, but you're not going to get lucky if you're not consistent because you, when you put out a video at the right time, it may attach to, um, you know, a bigger channel that's going to, you know, recommend your video, or it could just be the perfect timing, but you're not going to get those without being consistent. So consistency is key. But the biggest thing I say is, is starting yesterday. That's the biggest thing. Cause if you don't start now, that's a lot of people. And that was my biggest thing. I, I filmed a bunch of stuff during the pan, right before the pandemic, and I didn't put it out. And if I did, not I'd probably be a lot bigger than my channel is now because so many people blew up during the pandemic, and and that was my biggest fault for myself. You know, something I kicked myself in the butt with. But at the end of the day, like you never know. So that's why you want to start as soon as possible. And I will tell you, the biggest thing is a lot of people have the fear that's going to be crappy. No one's going to watch your video or your first five or ten or fifteen videos. Maybe your family and your friends. So like, even if the video is crappy, it's okay because. You're going to have a new one. Maybe 100 people watch it. I think my first video I put out for yard sale, I get maybe 200 people watch it. You know, oh, like. Dude. I had was, like 17. Yeah. Maybe so like, like my family. Yeah. So. That, and I, mean, I really tried thing. hard. Yeah. That's, <laughs> but, like, people don't don't think about that. So, you know, put out the videos. No one's going to watch them. And then that's how you get better because. And then that one video is going to click. And then you're going to get, you know, all your videos have 50 watchers. And then that one video is going to get 10,000. You're like, what do I do? And then you learn from that. He's like, okay, I well, went people on like people's like lives that. and talked to him about starting. Yeah. I remember primetime treasure hunter Dom was the first one to give me a shot. Thankfully, my TikTok had blown up a little bit, so it kind of got me in the door. But I was talking to him. I'm like, please let me on the show. Like I was letting yeah. people know who I was. I was being annoying maybe even, but it worked because I really wanted so, it and it was fun. I, that's a great point because the best – probably I always say one of the best pieces of advice I got was from Kat. She told me to RJ be everywhere. You know, be everywhere when you start out. Be – be everywhere that's what she's because that's what she did and and also to networking you know like you won't believe how many people that could possibly come on this show that just don't even reach out don't even ask you know like so many people that mean cat we we reach out and get other people come on i guess yeah uh, if, if people reach out to us <laughs> really we, not, we just, don't reach out to me and say hey i want to get on the show we'll go look at your stuff and if it's decent we'll maybe book you in the future you know but at least you're getting your you're getting yourself in front of us and that's how you're going to grow. You need to take chances, to take opportunities. Yeah. 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 This is a perfect quote here. The harder I work, the luckier I am. Correct. So okay. in order, and you do, you do need a little bit of luck. Oh, and um, I would say LaRod said I was everywhere. When I first started my yeah. channel, every reselling live I could find, I was there. Like if somebody did a premiere of a video, I was in there chatting and a lot of the bigger channels can't answer all the questions in the chat. So I would be answering if they were reselling questions and I could help, I would answer them. So I had people, they're like everywhere I go, there you are. And it was true because I would spend probably, Dalton Dean, shh, he's running, his pants fell down and he thinks it's funny. He's running around with his pants around his ankle. Um, Hopefully he doesn't yeah, come behind. Um, <laughs> but um, so like I was everywhere and they they would be like, I see you everywhere I go. And I don't I don't see as many lives. I know like Derek and Regina have theirs. Um, if you guys want to put some live reselling shows in the chat, please do that. I don't have time to see and find all of them anymore. Uh, there network. used to be quite a few regular, yeah, reseller yeah. information Tuesday network. Morning, yeah, Tuesday morning reseller information network. So uh, all of those shows go to them and be in their consistency posting. And I would say, watch what, like, so say like Carrie, he got 17 views on one video, but if he did another one and he got 50 views, which is, you know, two and a half times the 17, I would do more of that video that you got 50 on. Exactly. So when my teacup video hit 
I have and still to this day, I do a research video every single week. And a lot of you probably found me from those because that went, it actually started with the linen research video that di it didn't go as viral, but it, it was like way higher than any of my other ones. And I was like, okay, I'm doing more. And that's how I did the teacup one, which did go viral. Um, and then a necklace one I think did as well. So just two, two videos have went really viral for me. And that's gotten me to almost 75,000 subs. And a lot of the people I talk to that are at 75 or 100, they've only had one or two videos go really viral. And that was all it took to catapult their account. And I actually, I saw Sam Jolie Flips. She posts all the time on TikTok. And then she posted on her Instagram today. She had one hit a million out of nowhere. And she's like, all it takes is one vid. Like, that's seriously, that's all it takes. It could be one of your new ones. And the funny thing, I know Carrie was talking about Dom. Primetime Treasures video that went viral was one of his earliest and one of his worst by him. He said that. And he's like, of course, that's the one that goes viral like later. It was his like padded flat rate envelope video that went viral for Dom. So it could be, it could be one of those, beware. It could be one of the earlier ones and you're like, man. And it's funny because people comment all this stuff to change. And a lot of times you already have by the time like they see your video because a lot of times they go viral three months, six months, even a year yeah. later, they could hit. You never know. Yeah. Yay. Left lane finds it. Thousand. Congrats. All right. I, I also Dalton think those years, people, you always have to decide, do you want to be entertainment? Do you want to be educational? I think a lot of times people try to just, when you're throwing so much stuff against the wall, you're hoping something's in the stick. You kind of have to almost niche down one way or another to try to focus on what you're doing. Like Kat's really good about doing her, her research videos. You know, Carrie and Donna are really do good about doing thrifting videos. And, and They're good at shorts like, too. My shorts really. never gain tra yeah. traction, but I have to say, I don't think I probably put in enough time and effort and continue doing them for them to get traction. Um, so I might in the new year. Yeah. I would also oh, say yeah. remember Chris. this too. Remember that you're the only person in the world that's you. The only person. Right. That's a big work one. on work on your craft. Work on making things watchable. Your editing, your thumbnails, and everything. But the only person that can do a Carrie video is me. The only person that can do a cat video is Cat. Uh, a Lady Arbitrage Don video is Don. Rod, you can only do Rod videos. So if there's certain parts about you that you know that people attach themselves to, you know, just do that. Be yourself. It helped. It's helped me a lot. It took me a long time to learn too. You look at my early videos, they're way different than they are now. Way different. Because I was yeah. trying to be Kevin, and I'm not Commonwealth Picker. I saw yeah, it. but I think most people, I started out trying to be Matt. Uh, like, I think you will mimic. You start that way. In yeah. the beginning, you you're going to mimic, yeah, like your favorite creator. But then you should grow into your own and find your own style. You start. You can start That'll out happen mimicking. I think a lot of producing. people do. Well, yeah. I think it's. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel. That's the biggest thing. So you're going to, you know, you know what you like on, on YouTube and that's what you're going to try to mimic at first. But I think the biggest thing is you got to be real. You can't be fake because your viewers are going to see you right through that real fast if you, if you try to be. So. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin says he's glad that Carrie can only make Carrie video. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I, I think, I, like, you're going to mimic, but you're going to come into your own. You're going to get more comfortable. You're going to be able to talk to the camera better. You're going to realize you need to have the eye contact. There are a lot of things that only come with repetition and doing it over and over and over, you know, that you can watch and you can get better at. That's that's I mean, the big thing. Chat, how many videos do you have on your channel right now? Over a thousand. Yeah, Commonwealth Picker, he has probably, what, 1,500 on there, like, you guys got better know, over time because me. you guys have done so many videos over time. You guys know what works, what doesn't work. And, you know, like for me, I'm I'm about to, I'm under 200 videos, you know, so I have a long way to go, but I'm building that library. And that's how you're going to just learn as you go. Yeah, I have 1.1K, but that a lot of that is because I did for a while while I was growing, and this is a method that can help. I was posting daily content. I will tell you, yeah. It is a legit grind. 
and it takes a lot of time and effort like props to Jocelyn because she still does it but yep. I did it for a couple months and I just could not but Kevin only has 736 736 yeah, on, combine, on his one channel <laughs> yeah this one channel if you combine his other channels he's like 1500 videos it accelerates yeah. your learning, though, doing yes, that daily vlog That's... thing. It's not fun, and I wouldn't suggest doing it long term, but it accelerates your learning because every day you're you're noticing something that works that doesn't work. You're having time to react quickly. It, it's a good hack because you can yeah, you did that doing it. Harry, I forgot you did that for a while when you went well, across I've America. It a times. It's I, yeah. I didn't miss a TikTok for a year and a half. I think I have over I have over two thousand TikToks at this point, wow. like or shorts, um, and yeah. I didn't miss for a while. I kind of backed off last year, but. Yeah, see, it's awesome. Yeah, a thousand videos this week. Aaron, Aaron was sad. So I also, for years, I did premieres and then I stopped those. I used to premiere every video and I just, um, I don't do it. I will occasionally, like maybe once every other month. It is that's a start. Just, that's the thing. You no, all got to start somewhere, no, yeah, right? More than a lot of people on this panel, on that panel, in the chat. I mean, there's that's a you know that's a nice start. Like that's six. If you did one a week, that's sixteen weeks. You know, that's a lot of content. Yeah, I agree. All right, Russell wants to know who else is eating Christmas leftovers tonight. Not us. Not us. <laughs> we had breakfast for Christmas, and I think we burn ourselves out. We had too much. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be eating Christmas leftover fire for another two days. There's so much. Yeah, we had leftovers. I had leftovers because I was so sick yesterday. I didn't go to the family function. I was home. So Brad bought me leftovers last night, and I had them this morning for breakfast. I had Christmas leftovers for breakfast this morning, but not anymore. But it was good. It was good. All right. All right, this you can say no no comment if you would like. <laughs> Archie wants uh, no, to know. Archie, you can come on over and hang out if you want, but yeah, no, <laughs> not anytime soon that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> he said he Carrie said you can come be his kid and he'll adopt you and you can yeah. run around. You're never you're never too old to be adopted, Archie. Well, come on over. <laughs> this is like a weird guy. Let me tell you, he's a weird guy. Go check out his recent <laughs> lock. If you guys want to see interesting podcasts, they go Thursday mornings, uh, reset our locker room, check them out. Current time says I've been <laughs> researching many reseller channels and love yours. I sold on eBay back when you would receive checks and money orders. So did I and Rod. Myself and Rod have both been selling since then as well. Uh, do you have any advice or do you advise eBay for a newbie? So because she hasn't been on, she's asking if we would advise eBay for a coming back new reseller. 100% it would be my number one advice would be would be start with eBay. Cause once you learn eBay, I would say Mercari is a little simpler, but it's not as dynamic. It doesn't, I don't feel like it produces as many sales. eBay, in spite of hearing about whatnot and and dippedit.com, which is amazing. Um, in spite of those two places, eBay is still the premier place, I think, that gets the most traffic. I would start there and then decide if you want to branch out. But you could you could make a part-time living, a full-time living on eBay alone um, with just a little bit of preparation and hard work. I, uh, I'd say eBay is the number one place to, to probably start or stick to. And then, of course, branch out, uh, cross list or whatever and try other avenues. But eBay is definitely still number one for us. Yeah, I would say eBay is an 800 pound gorilla in the room. So you're going to have all these other selling platforms, but eBay is one of the originals and eBay is here to stay. And I mean, they have a hundred million users on there and you can find anything in the world on there. These other, a lot of these other selling platforms are kind of niched down in certain categories, but eBay is the go-to. And I would say you can just list it and forget it and get sales months later or the same day. You just never know. Yeah. And I agree that eBay, I think it should be everybody's starting place because I think if you learn eBay with the exception of Amazon, Amazon is a whole nother beast. Um, but if you learn eBay, the other selling platforms should be easy for you. They should be a lot easier to do. So I think it's a good place to start, kind of build up your foundation for used stuff. It has the most eyes on it. 
out there. And if you are consistent and put the work in, or if you have amazing stuff, you don't have to have a ton. There are people that run businesses with only 100 or 200 items listed and make more than I do. It's not about, it's not about the count. It's about the quality and making sure you find what will sell. That would, that would be my biggest advice is check the sell through rate, make sure stuff's selling. Don't just put, pick up anything. Um, and you should be better. We need, listen, I, I had another, I had another bonanza. Sale. I, I had my monthly bonanza <laughs> sale last week. Okay. Um, Question for Dawn. I have a 20 inch black nursing cloth dog, no hair for a stuffed animal with two puppies. The puppies attach with the snaps. I feel like it's very old. Do you have any ideas on how to research it? Black nursing cloth dog. I, I, I do most of my research with Google uh, lens search or on eBay with a photo. Um, that's you have to have a tag. That would help. It's you playing Google lens for people that, that don't know. Yeah. How you use Google Lens. Lens. Pardon? You want to ex explain that to the people in the chat that don't know what Google Lens is? I just use my phone, take a photo, and then I go to, it's a little app to get Google Lens. You go in there, or you can uh, actually use your photo on eBay directly. Now you eBay one's really good, there. too. Yeah, just I actually go back and button. forth. Because yeah. sometimes eBay doesn't get as specific, but when I go to Google Lens. So you have to download the app for Google Lens. The Google Photos you, app. Google Photos, and then you take your photo and you go in and you hit lens, and it it takes it and it tells you. It'll even tell you if it's listed on Etsy, Macari. It'll show you all these different places, and it'll give you that item or like items. Um, I go back and forth from eBay directly or Google Lens because sometimes eBay doesn't work for me, or it'll stop working in the store if I'm using it a million times in a row. Then I'll just go to Google Lens. But that's you, yeah. So on eBay, guys, see the camera. You just push that. Yep, the little camera up and top. Pick my photo. my listers use that when they don't because I pick up so much random stuff. Yeah. They've you, they've learned to like use that to figure out what the heck I'm giving them to list because I list it's really oh, it's really really solid too. Honestly, yes. it's really powerful. It does a great job. I would use it. I we almost use it daily going to thrift stores. Oh, I use it. I use the everything. eBay one. Don uses Google more, but they're both Lucifer. helpful. Lucifer. <laughs> Uh, he's in. Do you guys see him? He's in my poly mailers. Look at the little sucker. He's in. Do you see him? Yeah. He's Again? taking a few. He's going to do some shipping. It's a, it looks like it looks like Kevin's place with all the kids shipping while he's just sitting. The cats. Everybody works. I see him. He's knocking all the poly mailers down. I see him. There he goes with all the poly. Okay. None of them came down. I don't think. Um, yeah. No came. None came down. I don't know how I missed this. I am so sorry. Shabby Vintage Bell sent us a $6.99 super chat. Thank you so much. Here is your dolphin. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Sonny wants to know, do we respond to all lowball offers? He said he has a rare Pearl Jam tour trucker cap listed at $349, and he got an offer for $60. Me and Don are definitely different with this. I will um, a lot of times counter an offer like that because um, $60 isn't nothing. On a, I mean, it's way a low. It's definitely a lowball, but it's not a dollar. So they might actually be a buyer. Um, Don will get upset typically, right, Don? And you'll just decline it? <laughs> yeah, well, if it's ridiculous like that, then yes. So what, so depending on the category you're selling in, vintage clothing is notorious for lowball offers uh, because a lot of times they expect or sometimes they don't, they want to catch the seller off guard. Maybe they don't know what they have and they haven't gotten an offer in a while. I see that a lot. Uh, but I respond to all offers. Even if they're lowball. Now, I used to be like Don, and I used to just say, nope, not responding. But I would say I would respond, but I added a message to it. Say, hey, I can't go that low, X, Y, Z. And I can't tell you how many times that lowball offer has jumped like to like a legitimate offer after responding. So it, I would say it's an opportunity for you to interact with the buyer. The buyer could just be testing the water to see how low you're willing to go. 
and they're just throwing that out there and say, hey, maybe they're hoping that you're going to counter 100 bucks, and then, but they're willing to pay 200 bucks for that. And so they're just testing the waters, and I think it's a good way to distinguish if you know what you're talking about and to just send a little message when you send the offer back. So I've said this many times and it still holds true. It depends on my mood. So if I'm in a good mood, I'm just going to decline. That is me being nice. If I am in like a not so nice mood, I would counter at 348.50 or 348.99. Um, so it. It, that's me not. So the nice thing is for me to decline. Uh, <laughs> not so nice as when I counter them at a penny under my asking and I do it. Um, at, but even those, I feel like it gets the point across and a lot of them come back with a lot higher offer when I do that. Like they got the point. Yeah. Um, I did, somebody sent me a dollar offer and I was gonna do the counter and I decided to block them instead. This was last week. I was like, I'm not even dealing with the dollar. Um, so, and we talked about this a few shows ago too. I would first, Sonny, if you get that $60 offer or if you guys get a low offer, go look, if you're on the computer and you have the time, go look on their feedback on the computer and you can see the feedback left for others. See if they are a negative feedback lever because there are those people out there as evidenced by all of the questions earlier and everybody getting negative. So if that $60 offer came from somebody that left a ton of negative feedback, I'm going to block them right then. Like that's going to be that because a lot of the negative feedback people I feel like are doing extortion to try and get you to give them money back to remove it. Um, I hate to say that it's dirty, but a lot of them are like, and if, if they say that, if you can get them to say that in a message, you can get it removed. But, you know, if they don't, a lot of them will leave it hoping you'll be like, oh, I'll give you 20 bucks back if you'll remove. And then you're just reverse feedback extortion them if you offer them money to take it down. Um, but I would check it, too, because that low baller might be somebody you don't want to deal with, you know. So if you have the time to research it, just look it up. I would anyways. And I have been. That the dollar offer sender was not a negative feedback lever, I will tell you, but I, I blocked him. I have a very long block list. <laughs> All right. Mindy said she is new to eBay. Do you recommend using the promote to increase your item visibility? That's been a pretty hot debate lately in the community for sure. Um, I, I waver with that. We have been doing 5% uh, promotion across the board lately. I don't, it, it all depends on nuance. If you have one of Elvis's uh, teeth, one of his, his tooth, you probably don't have much competition. And I don't think you can sell that on eBay, by the way. But just as a, gen if it's a rare item, I don't know if you need it because it's not gonna, you're not competing with anybody. But if you're selling, you know, iPads or something that's highly competitive, yeah, you're probably gonna wanna promote. So it depends on the item. So there is some nuance to it. I typically try to stay away from the trending rate. It's getting worse and yes. worse as far it's as ridiculous. how high it is. Um, but like I, I was talking to Josh Harry Tornado last week about that and he or on the, he, he made a comment on our podcast, Trash to Cash, shout out. Um, he said he had an item that's been listed for five months at 100%. Um, basically, they would make all the money and he would owe fees, I guess. And it still hasn't sold, probably because the item's um, not desirable because they could put it in front of as many people as possible. But if nobody wants it, that's a whole nother thing. So. I would mess around with it. I would try different things. We just do it at a low rate so that it could get us a minor bump if needed. That's how we do it. We were doing the trending for a while until it got, it's like up to 12%, sometimes 13% on certain things. Sometimes like it's, 18, it's 19 ridiculous. in some cards. So now I've just been doing five across the board, unless it's something like we got a, a, a bag of Lego minifigs and oh, listed man. a few of them like individual. <clears throat> I'm not going to do a 5% on a minifig that's seven bucks. So yeah, we just don't promote that because it's such a, a, a low amount. And it'll if it sells, it's, it doesn't take up any space. So we're all right with it just sitting there until somebody buys it. So it all depends on what the item is, but I won't go over 5% anymore. So I do promote very little um, between two and 3% no my arms. Not that I, I, I mean, I can afford more on my items. It's just, hold on. Kai, you got to take this. I got to cough. Go. 
me and Rod are both having coughing fits tonight. So <laughs> apologies. Um, I promote everything at trending plus 4%, but it is capped at 12. And I will tell you most of them it is 12% on. Um, but I, I promote everything high because I buy so low, like the boxes that are selling for 50, 75, a hundred dollars. I paid $2 for, so I'm okay promoting that up. And then, and Aaron made a good point. Where'd she go? Where'd Aaron go? Oh, here. So Aaron, so even with a rare item, I agree with her. I promote everything because then it will show up with people searching similar items. They might not have been looking for yours and now they're going to see it and they're going to buy it. I've had that happen quite a bit where I have the only one, I still promote it and it might be to somebody not. So I think if you buy low enough, like Poshmark fees are 20%, right? So if you're selling on Posh, you're okay with paying 20%. So eBay on average, I think is about 12 to 13. So you could promote it seven and still be equal to, you know, what Posh fees are. That's how I look at it. I know there's a, there's a lot of YouTubers that have done tests where they turn it off for a month and then turn it back on. And even though the one thing I don't think a lot of people don't consider when they do that is, you're still changing something to your listing, which is going to, you know, trigger the algorithm. And you may, you know, that's why people end and sell similar because they're just making minor changes to it. But I mean, I'm a firm believer that I think, listen, if I had a brick and mortar store, I'm going to do whatever I can to promote my business and to try to get some type of advertising there. So I look at my, my eBay store the same way that I'm going to at least promote at least not what eBay is recommending, because I think what they're recommending is a bunch of BS. Um, a lot of their numbers are skewed. Uh, especially like what they tell you to recommend an item is sold for, or when you go to list an item, say, Hey, you, you know, this is what the average sales price is. And you know, there's all kind of crazy things that, that throw that number off. So I think the promotion is very similar to that, but um, I stick, I stick around two to 3% me personally. But the biggest thing is if you list your item competitively, you're not going to have an issue selling your item. You know, if you have an and item, and if you have very price, good popular items, they're going to yes, sell whether they're yeah, promoted no, or not. Fast sell exactly. Rate, you could go, Good. You don't even have to be on eBay. You could be outside your front porch. If you have a <laughs> PS5 for $200 under Walmart, you're going to sell it to just somebody yeah. walking by. <laughs> so I think the yeah. biggest thing is is everyone's so fixated on the whole promotion aspect. If you focus more on your, your sell-through rate and you focus more on getting items and have competitive pricing, that you can promote very little and your items are going to sell. So. Yeah. I. Do... I... Oh, go ahead, Carrie. No, I just say I do whatever J Ride tells me to do, hundred percent of the time. <laughs> Listen, he kicks my butt in sales, man. He's yeah. he's kicking he's my good, butt. Dude. I know. I I agree. I agree for sure. All right, let's do one more question, and then we'll give away some stuff. Uh, Rosie wants to know if you cross list. What is your percentage breakdown for each platform in twenty twenty three, and how long does it take to cross post? We, we cross list kind of like off and on. I'm not super consistent with it. Um, <laughs> I'm not great with Poshmark. I think we get canceled a lot of our Poshmark orders this year just because I forget. Um, Mercari, I have noticed this because I've been selling on Mercari since 2015 and it's not super fast for me. It doesn't sell the items nearly as fast as eBay, but uh, I've been doing pretty well selling bigger ticket items on Mercari lately, personally. But realistically... The, the only cross-listing I do is technically not even cross-listing. I'm taking items off eBay and putting them on whatnot. Uh, it's stuff that's been sitting around and moving. Or dibbed it. So, or dibbed it. Dibbed it yeah. It's the knickknack <laughs> of collectibles. Knickknacks.net. <laughs> .net. <laughs> we mostly, when we do cross-list, it's mostly on Macari. Um, I'm still... I just barely got a computer. I'm still trying to learn how to do that because he, he gave me that job now to do the cross-listing. So I'm just barely learning how to do that. Uh, Macari's easy, but I don't know anything about Poshmark or that. What's the other one? Grail? or Grail, Depop. 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 I don't Bonanza. know. Bonanza. I haven't done Bonanza. We should sign up, though. I don't think. He's do it. it do like, it. it's one click, and it's just done. I know. Like, I know. Know. You can import your entire eBay store you into a You get one sale a month. It's and amazing. Like, this should come well pick up. He gets five sales a month. But other than that, everyone else gets one sale a month. Right. 
<laughs> so, so for me, I, I mean, I try to cross list everything I have in my store. Um, I'm like Carrie though. I don't do consistently where I'll do it like five days in a row and then I'll take some, I'll wait a couple days and do more or wait the next week and do it. I like to do it in spurts, uh, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Um, but I mean, my, my main sale is going to be eBay or, or whatnot at this point. Yep. Or I did it. I've been, uh, did my live sale on there too, which went great. So. Yeah. So I will figure out my percentage at the end of this week or next week. And I put a video out. Um, I can tell you approximate, look at him go with his 13 sales. Um, he is Kevin wins the MVP for Bonanza seller. We will give him that for sure. Um, so for me, (laughs) <laughs> I would say this year, this is my prediction. Yep. It's going to be about um, 60. I'm going to guess 60% whatnot, 35% eBay, probably 5% Etsy, 5% Posh, and 5 Mercari. So that is my estimate. But I will tell you, what not is at a quarter of a million in sales. I know that for a fact. Um, eBay is at a little over a hundred. So it's about, it's less than half. Um, but the profit margin on what not is nowhere near the profit margin on eBay. Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. Um, as far as how long it takes, I, it doesn't take me any time cause I pay my 74 year old mother to do it. Um, But I will tell you, my mom comes over three days a week for about four to five hours. So 15 to 20 hours a week. And I'm posting 200 to 250 a week. And she's getting them all cross posted to two platforms. So I would say about 10 items an hour ish she's doing. And my mom is like a teenager and plays on her phone. So she's not very focused. Um, So I would say if you're only listing, like, if you list 50 a week, I would say you could probably do it in three hours at most. Or you could pay a VA to do it. But I will tell you, and I did that before my mom was working for me. And they were cross-listing for, like, 50 cents a listing. But the hard thing with that on Mercari is they were not getting the shipping right. They'd put like an eight pound item was eight ounces and I kept getting charged. So that's why I didn't like the VA for that. Okay, uh, Dalton got a switch and it actually came from one of my viewers, guys. I posted and asked and look, show him. He's very happy with this switch. He's playing a game. Um, Because I wanted to buy it from the community versus just buying it from someone on eBay. And, And I did, so. Okay, go so ahead. So Rockstar Flipper just dropped the video probably about a half an hour ago saying that a lot of stores are, are doing away with free returns. So if that's true, I would be very interesting to see how that impacts 2024, especially if, if Amazon, I think at the end of the day, if Amazon do, does away with free returns, then don't expect to have free returns on eBay anymore. So I get all funny. my reselling um, news from from the rock stars. So yeah, I get all my, all my reselling news as well. So yeah, so I I don't think it takes a ton of time, and I used to do it again before my mom was working for me. Um, I bought a Chromebook just for cross posting, and you can get them for like 150 bucks on eBay. And I would bring it to work and do all my cross listing in like 30 minutes on my lunch hour. Um, so you can do it in a short time. You do need a computer, but the Chromebook is an amazing thing to get, to be able to do it cheap for like 150 bucks. You can get a new Chromebook on eBay, which is where I got mine. Um, so I, but ignore the percent. Like I will tell you like Poshmark, I had like 12 to 15,000 in sales this year. So when I tell you it's 5%, that's not negligible. $10,000, $12,000 a year is not a small amount, you know? And to me, it's 100% worth paying. I, I have the $69 plan with List Perfectly um, to make 
1500 to 2000 more a month, which is about what it is, you know, 20 something thousand a month and I pay 700 a year, right? Like yeah. to make the process easier. Oh, giveaway stuff. What do we, oh, okay. Here, Rod, will you read the next question and I'll get yeah, this ready. I was not prepared. All right. Um, it says, I accidentally paid for two shipping labels. What do I, do I need to do anything? You could just uh, cancel the first one. Um, it takes like two to three weeks, I think, uh, for the refund to come back. But that's all you have to do. Yeah, if you go in your My eBay and you click on the uh, shipping label tab, there's a drop down there that you can actually click on it to actually remove it there. So, um. all right, I got I got this pen. Yes, sir. Sister said I. Did Thank you, Biscuit Butt. Appreciate it. Oh, he doesn't have enough money to do what he wanted to do. He went inside to ask his sister yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. Spin, um, He's showing. That wheel. He doesn't have enough money to spin the wheel. <laughs> yes, they see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Hashtag eBay scarf. So, shh. This, I want to say thanks. This is from Diane. Diane sent me this and she said, Kat, if you won't use it, feel free to give it away. So thanks to Diane for sending me it. I'm not a scarf wearer. Check this out. Look at how cute this eBay scarf is. It's brand new from Miss Diane. Isn't it cute? If you're a That's scarf awesome. wearer, I'm not a scarf wearer. Mom, what is this? Um, <laughs> It's a piece of styrofoam. Okay, Miss Barbara wants to know, is there a way that YouTube can promote your virals? Oh, like you can pay. I don't think there's a way. You, is there a way you can pay to promote your YouTube? I mean, you could pay with Google ads, right? Or something like that. Yeah, so you can do Google ads to pay to promote your like shorts and your, and your videos, that aspect. But the uh, promoting your videos would be on like the top search on the page. That's what what YouTube uses to test videos and also see how your video is performing. If your video is performing well, then it can move you to the, the homepage of the of YouTube. So. Oh, we lost Cat. All right. Well, oh, hey. All right. Well, guys, <laughs> man, Cat. You grew up I, I did hashtag $1,000 cash. Let's see if that works. I'm hoping. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what just happened. I don't know, but Kerry's about to run hashtag a thousand dollars cash to see what happens. I did hashtag thousand cash. See if that works. What? Uh. You can't break it. All right. Yeah. So Marsha said it's in beta. Maybe it care the carry give. Yeah, Aaron's no, pointing your way, Carrie. That unfortunately. <laughs> 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 hashtag balls. Yes. Hashtag balls. We haven't had balls in a lot of time. I, I should find some balls to sell and whatnot. We, balls are fun. Hashtag balls. All right. <laughs> Any recommendation? So what would be your recommendation for other platforms besides eBay? What the heck? I don't have the pin comments anymore, Rod. You don't have a pin comments anymore? Nope. I don't know what the heck just happened. I don't know. Maybe log out, come back in. Carrie will give away a thousand dollars. Well, it's not my money, so it's I'm okay with it. So, the question is any I gotta get out of that. Back. Uh, um okay. so any, any recommendations, recommendations for yeah. platforms other than eBay? I mean okay. I without a doubt, the one we use the most outside of eBay is whatnot. Obviously, that's tough to build. It's, you know, even it's tough to build if you have a following. It really is. Um it takes a lot of consistency, but it feels like the platform that when you put in that that work and time and money, because you're going to lose money occasionally, uh, right. it, it could be really helpful and really valuable. When you get up to that thousand sale range, I think it is where you can start getting the instant payouts. It's a really cool tool to use. But that Mercari is great. I've used Mercari for like seven, eight years. It's also something I use a lot. Yeah, Mercari, I would say. Whatnot, of course, but um, that's not for everybody. Some people don't want to do whatnot or do live auctions, but... Macari, I would say, is probably one of the easier ones to use. Yeah, I would say uh, Macari is really so. I, I at the end of the day, it comes down to what kind of items you sell. If yeah. you're selling like vintage, you're selling clothing, you know, like Grail, Depop might be a good option for you. Um, if you're just an everything seller, I think Macari and Posh are, are options. Um, I love whatnot. Um, it took I lost money there for for a couple months doing whatnot, 
But once I, I found my niche on, on whatnot and I was able to build an audience around there, it's been a, a game changer for me. But um, I would say it's, you know, it really comes down to the individual seller. I think you need to try all the different platforms to see what fits best for you. Like Kat was selling on Etsy for the longest time. Now she just stopped. But I won't touch Etsy because I it's just a platform just not for me, you know. But it's really going to come down to, you know, what you're individually selling and kind of see what other people in that marketplace are selling. It's a good place to sell your homemade wrestling outfits, Rod. Yes. It is. <laughs> Perfect. Spot. I can sell my used ones on eBay. There you go, dude. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Market. I, Rod, I have a do you that... have the pin comments? Yeah. So if I pin a new one, I see it, but I don't see any of the old pin ones. Okay. It's really weird. Just... You talking about the questions? Yeah, so you, yeah, you yeah. can click it. Like, yeah, I really see would... the new question. Okay. But now, now I have starred, but it's like all the other ones escaped. Yeah. So for me, we do Poshmark, Mercari, whatnot, and knickknacks. I would recommend, depending on what you're selling on, get on one of these district platforms. Like there's Dibdit um, there for like, what are you guys doing? Like pop culture stuff Basically mainly? Pop cultures, 80s, 90s. Why do I not hear you? You don't hear him? Yeah. And then Jocelyn. Uh, you hear me? Knickknacks is. Um, like vintage and glass stuff. I'm yeah. like having a, I don't know what is going on. I'm yes. getting like a delay hearing everybody. Craigslist Hunter has, has a store in there where he does like everything kind of like eBay. Um, the reselling information network has one stop has shop. Store. Yeah. One like, stop shop on yeah there. And you can apply to them guys. You can apply. Um, yeah. Picker gems. I know knickknacks. We're up to over 1200 sellers now. Um, and Jocelyn is approving people every day, but for every hundred she approves, she gets 200 more applications. So, um, I do I Dibdit, mind? Dibdit, we're trying to keep it at about 10% of our total number of people. So that we're at like maybe a hundred. So we're a little under 10%. We actually need to approve some more people, but uh, that's a process. <laughs> we have to look yeah. at the eBay stores and everything. So. And, and here, here's the thing. I'll give you guys recommendations. If you guys apply for any store in there, it doesn't matter if it's, if it doesn't matter if it's knickknacks, make sure you guys include enough information for them That's to approve you. So huge. Please, yes, please put your links to your eBay store, details of what you guys are selling, all that information, because it's going to make the approval process so much easier. If you just apply and you don't put information, you're not going to get approved. The key um, is with, with Dibdid is suck up to Kevin. Say something <laughs> nice about Commonwealth Picker because he loves him some him. So if you focus on him, <laughs> he'll probably approve you no matter what. All right. So um, I'll share why I left Etsy and then we'll pick a winner for the eBay scarf. Go ahead and tell him what you wanted to tell him. Merry Christmas. He's throwing popcorn in my shit. Like not popcorn, <laughs> popcorn, but packing popcorn. That's why we don't buy it anymore. But if we get it, we reuse it. Um, that's his confetti, I guess. So why I left Etsy. Um, N -I Nick Nax is N-I-K-N-A-X. Um so why I left Etsy is I wasn't getting enough sales for the monthly fees I was paying. So you better pick up every single piece. This is, he did this when he was two and apparently will still do it. That's why I don't buy them. Um, so we just vacuumed the floor today. Okay. Anyways. Um, I wasn't getting enough sales for the fees that I was paying on Etsy and my mom cross posts and I would tell her only vintage stuff and she would put brand new stuff. So I had a lot of stuff that was against the rules on Etsy because my mom just didn't have that filter. She just got in the habit of just go, go, go. Um, so a lot of stuff that shouldn't be on there was on there and it's funny because it was still selling, but um, it, you pay a fee every four months and it just, and it was harder and took longer to list on. That was the thing. It took a lot longer to list on and I didn't feel the return was worth it. All right, let me pick a winner and then we'll give away some poly mailers. Dun, da, da, da. Who's gonna win the scarf? And I, I will put my email so you can email me. Okay, I'll tell you who wins. Kate is the winner. Yay, Kate. Kate. Yep, Kate. Don't you go throw that stuff again. No confetti. Kevin actually has a good point for once. And I hate to say it because it's Kevin. But uh, seriously, though, like he will say this. 
If you want to sell live and you don't want to build a whatnot following, find your niche on District and you can get an audience with the whole marketplace much easier. Kat, how oh, that crazy exact thing. How crazy was your first live with on the on the uh, on the uh, crazy lamp lady? I mean, you guys had nine hundred people in there, seven hundred people in there for you yeah. know for that whole thing. Yeah, we had a lot of uh, people, and then I got like I did a show last week and had one hundred and fifty people, and I still did very very well in an hour and a half on knickknacks. That's why I said I'll probably do at least one show there. I put up hashtag GRO pack. You'll get to pick whatever you want that they have. Your choice, one pack, any size, any color, as long as it's in stock. Um, I, mean, I am putting my email to to email your address for the scarf. I mean, I think Dibdit did a really good job too, the first live, because they did the first live. We did a raid train and, you know, I was on there. Uh, Carrie's on there, Kevin, Dave. Um, yeah, that's what we did, did too. I did. I did over four hundred dollars in my in in less uh, what forty five minutes. So I mean, I was yeah. extremely happy with that. Um, we had over a hundred people in there, and it was great. So I would say I definitely check out these other platforms because District is really going to change the game. And I would recommend everyone go on there and just check it out. You don't have to be a seller in there. You don't have to be a buyer in there. But at least go on there, apply to, jump on these marketplaces to see what they're doing because. Moving forward in 2024, I really feel like districts gonna be a, is going to change the game going forward, and is going to give. It's, it's really cool because there there were people, and we're we're smaller than knickknacks for sure, but there were people who who do whatnot that may have 10, 15, 20 people in a whatnot auction that were on that raid train that had 70, 80, 90 people. So it's you're able to yeah. you know basically be a part of the community, and we have different people who have some following. And then you can also, it, it kind of, it, it's cool. It's a way to kind of share that and build up your audience as well. And we're, we're super niche down. So if you're selling what we're looking for, if you sell vintage wrestling action figures and you write that down, Kevin loves that stuff. If you, if you sell, you know, baseball cards or you do sports card breaks, that's probably something I'm going to approve. So there are certain things we do. Um, Nick Knacks has its own niche as well. You know, Geek stuff. So, and the one thing I want to add there: with the biggest complaint I hear about whatnot is I don't have the social media following. You need a social media following me on there. You know, yes, it does help, but with district, you're literally piggybacking off these bigger groups that have a social media following, and you can actually take advantage of that and really use that to build your own audience, or at least put yourself in front of an audience that you may not have had on whatnot. So, I think that's the real game changer for that. People are asking, like, what district is. It is, I think, yeah. a little confusing to some people yeah. at this point because it's, it, it's fairly, fairly – It's normal. a marketplace where people can create their own marketplace. So it is like smaller marketplaces like Kevin, Commonwealth like Picker, a, Carrie has like his. Like a mall or something. And everybody yeah. yeah, and there's little stores shop. inside of there. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good analogy, yeah. So district would be the mall, and then you would have the knick-knack, and then you would have – it's, it's it super powerful, too, because like I come from heavily in the sports card community and a lot of people in the sports card community sell via Discord, which is just kind of like a, sh a chatting app, like a forum that you go in and you chat within um, within district, within each little, uh, you know, knickknack, each district. There's a way you can communicate kind of like a Discord. Yeah, there's, there's a like a post. chat, a chat there's forum. There's a chat. Like school. There's a way to do buy it now listings. There's a way to do live auctions, like whatnot. It's yeah. like everything. And somebody altogether. asked if it's a live. So it's a marketplace and you can go live. It's both. You can do both. Built into one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's everything all combined into one. It, it's exactly. cool. I haven't had enough time Um this year, I might put try and put a little more time, but I like the live selling aspect of it a little bit more. Um, so that's Kat, something. To, so oh, I was gonna say, you need to check out the the uh, jump in like the discords they have on that, like the chats they have, because depending on how how a lot of people are set up, like for example, like like Dibdit has, they have one where like in search of, they have one just like you know people can just chat about sports cards, or they have one that people can chat about. You know, eighties items or something. So, you know, it's a good place. Yeah, to go like find on knickknacks, we have an in yeah. search of forum. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I would say I started interacting thing. with people that I never interacted with before, yeah. and found people that have the similar likes as me, which, which is cool because that's you know, reselling it can be a very lonely space. We talk about it all the time on, on this show, and 
be able to go in there and to chat with other people that have the same interests, same likes that either are looking to buy or looking to sell the same things that you do. That's a cool aspect to it, which you don't get in any other platforms. It's another way of networking. Yeah. I do want to say, so people are asking if we can show the icon. District is only an app on the iPhone as of right now. So on Android... Um, iPhones. They, you have to go to the browser or go on a computer. Um, I, Gina, I think you can see the chat when you rewatch YouTube videos. There's an option to turn it on or off. I'm pretty sure. Um, Teresa, we'll answer hers and then we'll pick our two winners for GRO Pack. Teresa wants to know how long does it take for you to respond to offers. Um, we, we, we try to respond like right away. We don't always, I mean, Don will be the one that to remind me to, to go check my offers. I typically ignore like super like low end ones. So that's my problem. But in general, try to respond as quickly as possible because then you might get a, a you know, a counter and then you can negotiate. If you, if you wait a while, they may be gone, moved on, on to the next item. I try to respond as quick as I can. If it's a card then unless it's a dollar fifty card and they're only offering a dollar, I'll deny that right away. If it's another card, I let Carrie handle the card ones, but I do have to keep reminding them. Other than that, I'll deal with the rest of them, and I, I try to answer as quick as possible. So I feel like a lot of times buyers make big impulse buys. So as soon as I get a response, as soon as I get that notification on my phone, I'm going to respond one way or another to that. Um, the only time I don't, the only time I wait maybe the 24 hours, if it's an item I just listed and I got a good offer, but it wasn't good enough to accept right away. So if I put up an item, say for $200, some says me $150 offer within the first hour, I have 24 hours to respond to accept that. So I may wait to see if I get any other offers before I send a counter offer. Yeah. So the only, I respond immediately if I'm awake, but, um, if it's something I just listed, I will let that sit for 24 hours till it's almost expired to see if any other offers come in. That's the only time that that I um, would wait is if I just listed it. I, you know, I not sometimes I might even end it. I've ended it. Cause I'm like, why am I getting all these offers so fast? I go re-research it and I'm like, eh. like I've, I've ended them before because I price too low. Cause I get all those offers. So pay attention. If you get fast offers, that would be a tip I would give you because something is probably gone. All right. Almost 150 entries. Let's go ahead, pick two winners. And Marsha put the instructions in the chat for you guys. You need to go pick what you want and then email me. Dun, da, da, da. Oh, oh, Jesus, you were so close. You were one away. <laughs> Mary MB7 is the yeah. first winner. And we will pick one more. Dun, da, da, da. I am behind the trash can. I would prefer you not be behind the trash can, please, sir. Cindy Snyder got the other. So congrats to both of you. All right. Melody said, how do I get eBay to remove a hit for late shipping after the buyer requested I waited for over a week to ship? I mean, you could try eBay for business on Facebook. I'm not sure if, if they can do much of anything for that. That's annoying when people do that because it, it can mess up everything for you on that end. But that being said, one late item is not really going to affect your eBay account at all. As long as you don't make a habit of it, I wouldn't I wouldn't waste my time calling and trying to figure it out or messaging people. I'd just let it go personally. What do you think, Don? Um, I would I would probably try and call and contact someone and talk to them. But I guess it all depends on the situation at the time and, and what was already on my eBay as far as hits or whatever. But um, I don't know. I have, I've never encountered that. So this always comes up around the holidays because people are traveling for like a week, but they, they get an, you send out an offer and people are going to accept it. They buy, they pay right away. And they ask you, can you ship it out in a couple of days, which passes the time. So the good thing is everything's tracked through eBay messenger. 
and eBay can actually see that. So if you would contact eBay, I'm assuming they would remove that hit on your account because they could see that was a requested by the buyer. Um, but like, like Carrie said, I mean, one late shipment's not going to ruin your account because it is on a rolling 90 days. So every 90 days, you know, your account's going to be, it's or actually every month at the 20th, they, they reassess your account. So on the 20th of each month, they reassess your account. And, you know, what you did that month prior is going to, or two months prior is going to be gone and then so on. So if you go to my, um, if you go to my eBay, you can actually look at your selling, your, your, the, the health of your account. And that would actually tell you where you're projected to be the next month right now. So they assess your account on the 20th of January right now. You can actually look in my eBay. It will actually show you what your account status would be at this current moment. So it's always really crucial, especially if you're a new seller, to always keep an eye on that. Because if you make any mistakes, especially being brand new or a low volume seller, they can really impact you. So always keep an eye on that. That's something I check daily when I go to my, uh, my eBay. Yeah, I would contact them. I Well, if I were you, if you're worried about it, I personally would not contact them. I've had, I think, two or three over the last year, and I ship so much, the one doesn't hurt me. Um, and typically, do. I've had people buy it, they want it, and they're going on vacation, so they don't want it to arrive when they're out of town. I think I've had three all year, though, so... It's, you know, for me, I, I don't bother with it because I'm still top rated and that doesn't um, take a hit. Squirrely Reseller mm -hmm. sent a $9.99 super chat and said, I'm struggling with organization as my home office garage and store unit are an overwhelming huge death pile. Do any of us have a video or link to share to a spreadsheet or inventory system? Ginger Marvin is a good one to look at as far as like organization goes. Definitely not me. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the best at that, but I, I, that's definitely a struggle. At one time we had done, remember we had like three storage units, a shop and, and it, we were still overwhelmed. So, and I, I like Ginger Marvin as far as uh, some of their videos on organization. That's what I'd recommend. Yeah. I'll agree with that one. So I'm the last person you want to watch right now because if, if anyone watches my Flipper channel, I keep talking about CSO. I'll keep it PG. Clearing stuff out right now as well. My, my mission right now because I have packs and stuff. I can't even walk in my office. It's just jam packed behind me. Stacks of stuff. Yeah, and, and my garage is completely full and my, my storage warehouse is completely full. So right now I buy too much stuff. And I'm trying to clear out. That's why I joined the storage unit category on – and whatnot, which is really good if you want to just blow stuff out and uh, or also network with other resellers and start posting up. I mean, it's okay to take a loss or to break even on items to give yourself that peace of mind or donate items. Um, because here's the thing I'll tell you one thing I learned from reselling over the years is you're always going to find great deals and good stuff. So it doesn't matter what you currently have right now, within the next month or two, you're going to find great stuff and you're going to get tons of stuff again. So it's okay to quick move it if you need to. Yeah. So I posted a link to my video of my sheds and I want to say that organization means different things to different people. So for me, the big thing with organization is that I can find items when they sell, like that's really all I'm caring about. Um, so it might look like utter chaos and a mess, but when we sell 50 things over the weekend, we find every single one of them out of 6,000 items. So to me, organization for reselling anyways is being able to find the item you sell when you sell it. That's the big thing. And so I, I showed you my sheds. We have three. And actually now I use my rental house as well. So we have four different storage areas <laughs> that we use. It's like my warehouse. My rental house is now my warehouse. Um so I don't use a spreadsheet. Um, I eBay is my inventory. The SKU systems are my inventory. I'm not a spreadsheet person. I will never be a spreadsheet person. That's just not me. Um, so as long as I can find it when it sells, I'm fine with that. Um, I will say I like, and I see all Dawn's bankers boxes. So when we bought this shed, to get everything out of the house. That was the purpose of this shed I am in. Um, I put everything in banker's boxes 
And I did that because I found if I had stuff in clear totes, I would list what I liked. And then the same stuff would end up at the bottom of the death pile over and over and over. So when I put them in boxes, I said, I'm grabbing a box. I'm listing everything in the box. I don't care what it is. I'm either listing it or it's going to get redonated. So everything mm -hmm. didn't keep like the same stuff at the bottom of the pile for years. We now, we have a small death pile, but it's all stuff that's been bought in the last two weeks. We cleared our, it, our my death pile was cleared out and it was thousands of items. Um, so we have floor space in this whole shed, which is nice. I didn't for a long time. But I think keep in mind if you're not a spreadsheet person and don't try to make yourself a spreadsheet person, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because some people just aren't. You have to find what works for you. And if you're doing money in, money out for accounting, you don't have to keep an inventory. You know, you as long as you know where it's at when it sells, that's all that matters. And I would like I, I would like to become more organized, but I know I'm not a, like, I'm just, I'm never going to be a spreadsheet person. That's just not me. And I need to give you a dolphin. All right. Let's do, here you go. Even though he's here and could say it himself. Hi, I'm Dolphin. He hasn't seen that one before. He said, it's Hollyhock said when ebay cancels an order for our protection do you keep the money they deposited but have not withdrawn it so this is what we went over earlier if you shipped it you're protected if they cancel it if you haven't shipped it you should cancel the order but you will have the money you do keep the money yes judy said which store do you need to be signed up for to run sales that show like a 50 percent off sale Hmm. Like just on eBay, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I think just any store, right? I don't know if you have. I think. I think it's any. It it. Even it's like the good. the lowest one, I think you can still do it. I believe any store would do it. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's any store. I think you just need a store. I think it's any store. Uh, yeah, I want to put this up real quick. Um, Rosie said, uh, I'm clicking you off, Rod, yeah, um, sure. to use the SKU inventory. That's what we do. So uh, all three areas of ours, and I go over that in the video I posted, um, like this shed for, I'm, I'm random, all, all the boxes in here are X. So we have up to like X 132 in here. Um, and then the first inventory area is like single letters, A1, B1. And the second shed, <laughs> is AA1, AA2, and now the rental, we, like, it's mostly just boxes. So if it's a box, we know it's in there. But the boxes are labeled, like, Chanel 1, Chanel 2, Chanel 3. So that way we know where everything is. All right, Miss Gloria said, what do you see as the new trend for eBay? I'm a hand crafter, jewelry seller, and upcycler. I mean, they're definitely trying to make eBay Live a thing. Um, they're they're giving it, especially within the sports car community, which is where I'm spending a lot of my time with Burbank Sports Cards or or Com C. They're doing lives almost every day on eBay right now. I don't know what will be with that, how that'll work long term, but it is a possible powerhouse if you had your whole inventory, you know, dispensable to put live at any given moment, um, a la you know whatnot. Um, would be pretty cool. So I think that's something that will happen at some level, uh, and it already is happening. Um, outside of that, I mean, I think eBay is going to continue to try to push uh, promotions that uh, get them the most money as possible. Uh, they'll continue to push that and pay per clicks and stuff, uh, a la Amazon. I think that's going to continue to grow, whether we uh, like it or not, probably. I'll have to agree with that. I think Whatnot came in and kind of changed the game. And uh, eBay's going to try and take their part in that and with the live auctions. And now with district happening, I think live auctions is like a, a new thing that everybody's interested in. Um, but uh, I guess uh, hopefully eventually maybe it'll all be available on eBay to everybody. But right now, like he said, they're just doing cards. Like or I think they might be doing other stuff, but it's definitely not available. I've seen high dollar jewelry. Well, oh, but it's all like higher dollar stuff. 
Well, remember, Hustle B was doing shoes on, on eBay Live as well. So they were doing oh, really? shoes. Too. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, so here's the thing with eBay. eBay, I want to say they're stuck in their ways, but you have to remember eBay is so big. When eBay goes to change something, it ta- it's a mo- it, there's months in that process. Yeah. So a lot of these sm- smaller platforms, whatnot, District, um, Macari, you know, Depop, Grail, like, when they, they can implement things a little bit faster, I think, than, than whatnot. Whatnot's very, uh, not whatnot, I mean, eBay's very antiquated in the process with, with their system. I mean, they've been around since the, the late 90s, you know what I mean, with the how they do things. Um, so I think that the, what you really need to look at is what other platforms are doing because eBay will try to implement those. You yes. know, when when they lost a lot of, you know, a couple of years ago, they lost a lot of um, selling space to StockX. So what do they do? They they on eBay, they started doing free. You had no fees for selling shoes for like what a year or two. You know what I mean? They started doing yeah, authenticity, authenticity guaranteed too for yeah. shoes and cars. Shoes. And now now they did the purses. They started doing it for watches. So I think eBay is going to expand the. They did it for uh, sports cards too. You know that's one of anything. That's so, like our biggest advantage as small resellers too. Is yes. we're not a monolith. We're not a giant corporation. So if Correct. Dibbed it were to make a lot of money, I could spend all my time on there, and I I, I don't it, I can pivot so quickly because you know I'm not going to let other things go away. Correct. But like I can pivot, and that's one of our biggest advantages is is we may not end up doing whatnot or dibbed it or or Macari or Posh, but we can try them and see if it works for us. Um, and it's yeah. it's a big advantage that smaller sellers have. So that's why I think it's so important to always you don't have to sell these other platforms. You need to keep an eye on these other platforms because what these other platforms are doing, eBay's going to implement because it's working somewhere else. They're going to jump on that trend. Um, eBay that has busted out eBay Live and it's a slow process, but that's where you see Poshmark starting to do it. But there's a room where Carvey's going to do it at one point in time. You know, it, I think live selling is going to be the biggest one. Um, also, too, what eBay is actually advertising. eBay has done a lot of promotions for eBay Motors. So eBay is going to be pushing eBay Motors. I think that's a big opportunity for them going forward. That may not impact anyone on this panel or anyone in this chat, but eBay Motors is a big thing because if they're running Super Bowl ads or they're running other stuff promoting that, you better bet that they're doubling down on that. Yeah, I would say look at like, and I'm saying this from doing research. So I think it was, one of my last two research videos, there was an upcycler on there that made wreaths with all vintage boho kitsch ornaments, and they were selling for seven and eight hundred dollars. So my advice would be figure out what stuff is popular as far as the vintage stuff and put that into what you're upcycling. The money this stuff was selling for was crazy, and they were wreaths that they were making. Um, handcrafted stuff a lot of time and Etsy's so big now I feel like the handcrafted stuff gets lost on Etsy um, I think on eBay the big thing for somebody handcrafting and upcycling is going to be keywords you need to find like kitsch cottage core granny core barbie core are good keywords so like upcycled doll furniture I don't know what you're upcycling and creating some of the hand created doll furniture when I did that research video was hand created. Like a lot of that stuff can go high, high dollar, but cats disappearing. So, <laughs> um, so I would also say, I would did like I to add cat- you did, yeah. You, yeah. you, you froze, okay, I you couldn't see you either. I was like, um, yeah, you froze, I just so- jumped on there for a second. <laughs> Yeah, so just like watch the trends and search. Like if you're ma- whatever you're making, search that and sort from highest to lowest to get ideas. That that would be my recommendation. With jewelry, it is very very saturated on eBay. But if it is named jewelry, you can sell it. If it's not, you better be promoting high and buying low. Uh, and, that would be my advice on jewelry. And I think a, a biggest mistake a lot of us is that if you're an everything seller, you need to, you know, you need to be following the trends for movies and and TV shows. Like you know, follow a Hollywood Reporter, walk into Walmart, walk into Target, walk through the the uh, toy aisle to see you'll see what's trending or what's coming up, and what's going to be hot. 
you know, these are things that you guys have to think outside the box. Hollywood the Reporter, edge. that's a really good one because they're talking about people who got casted for movies, movies that just got greenlit, Correct. and especially when it has to do with pop culture, like say a new He-Man Master of the Universe movie uh, was announced or they casted somebody. You might want to go get some He-Man or so, some comic. For those that don't know, I actually I actually get uh, daily reports on pop culture stuff for TVs and and uh, you know movies because when they announce that when they sign a script, they're signing a script two years in advance. You know when they're signing a, a director, they're signing a director a year and a half in advance. They're signing a writer, they're signing the main actor. These are things that are happening years in advance that you can plan for ahead of time. Like they're going to come with a peanut movie, you know, I think two thousand twenty five, two thousand twenty six. You know, so these Ooh, are things that don't you know. You know? Like you just pink, there's coming out a new Pink Panther movie coming down the line. There's, you know, these are things people don't know, but by the time you see the trailer, it's already too late because these are items you may have passed up at sales that you'd be like, oh man, I know, I know me wouldn't buy this item, but I, hey, I know this is going to be coming down the line. Let's pick Why this up. This you got to think not. outside the box. Cat is frozen again. All right. <laughs> well, let's go to the next question here. Question. Okay. Are did you, you feel me first? I'm back. I I connect my my home internet is being wonky, so I connected to my phone. Right. So I'll, will you pop Miss Barbara's super ch chat oh, yeah, real quick, I'll, and I'll yep, give her her. I'll pop in here. Yeah, absolutely. Here. So uh, where to get uh, there? Uh, mine just. Oh, here it is. There you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guy. My internet, like I'm hearing like every third word everybody's saying. So I hooked it up to my phone. So hopefully it'll be better. So Miss Barbara sent five dollars, and she likes a pillow fight. So I'm gonna give her that. You remember, he's seen that one. He, every time I put on one, he comes running. So Miss Angela said she sold a glass sun catcher that included photos and infos about the hanging piece being broken, but the ribbon still attached and would be included. And the person claims I was not clear enough. I don't know. Yeah, then just tell them you'll accept a return and then relist it. There's really not anything you can do, even if you have no returns on eBay. If, if they're asking, you're going to have to return it. I guess you can debate whether they pay it or not. We pay return shipping. Yes. That's just how we do it. It's simpler. But yeah, that's just part of business. Everybody needs to remember that on eBay, you know, eBay's the big business, but we're all small businesses within. And you should expect loss as a business occasionally you know one two percent or whatever of your items are going to arrive broken or not going to arrive at all and it's just something you have to write off at the end of the year well yeah i would just ask for it to be returned and then uh give them their money back and just relist it or do whatever you want to want with it or whatever but yeah we do free returns and that's just part of it we get that all the time mine froze okay um yeah what they said on that one so i don't really have, I don't really have anything to add to that so mine just froze yeah I, I do free returns and would do the same i would say look i offer free returns if you're not happy a lot of times that kind of comment makes me feel like they're fishing for a partial refund yeah. and i'm not going to give them that i'm going to yeah, tell them they return. can return it and then they'll be like, "Oh no, never mind, it's okay," and they'll they'll forget it. So you'll actually well, no, I'm a big stickler that for that. I'm a you big, do. I make them. I make them return it. I, every item, I try to make them return. I I won't give a partial because I'll I'll try and call their bluff. But if they're for real, then there's not an issue. But so there's a lot of times when they're just like, "Okay, forget it." But I tell Carrie, "We're not giving a partial. They have to return it. I'm not giving a refund until I get it." Yeah. Forever Blooms wants to know if we can explain how shipping works. I assume she means on district. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty similar. Uh, gosh, I mean, I'm still learning it, but you basically like if you're doing a live, which was our first live just last week, it will combine much like whatnot, all the orders together you put in um, and then you're going to do the shipping. Um, uh, they actually do a label. See, I had to remember because I've only done a few shipments out so far, but it's it's fairly similar to everywhere else. Um, most like whatnot if you shipped on whatnot, yeah. but they'll if you have three orders, it'll all be on one invoice. You'll you'll know the weight, and then you just put the weight in and you print a label. 
Yep. Yeah, I do like that you can actually comp- you can actually adjust it where on like whatnot you can't adjust it. So that's a big selling point for me on there. So it's really similar to eBay. You taking all the money and you can you can actually print your own labels too if you wanted to. Um, Another then- amazing thing about District Two is there like you can get a hold of the people running it very yeah. easily and they change they adapt really fast. I can't tell you. I mean, we've had like five to ten things so far in the month that we've asked to be added or fixed and they fixed them. Some of the stuff yeah, was like, we're not sure if we can do it and they figured it out. Yeah, yeah really so I, I shipped out like 25, I shipped out 20, 25 packages today from district. Um, the only, you have to do each one individually. I would prefer to print them all at one time so they don't have that option that I'm aware of. Um, I do like you can go outside. Like I had somebody that needed to change their address because they're at a different location. And I just went and bought that label on pirate ship and then I can input the tracking number. Um, But be aware that like if you're a district seller, it only shows the first item until you hit view. And then you'll see like, oh, they bought three or four different items. Um, So that um it it's easy and i don't see a way kevin you can let me know if you saw a way yes that's exactly what i was going to ask marcia there is no scan form option on district that i saw so like today it sucked because we bought almost 30 items and they had to scan each one and we hate hitting them with that many um whatnot at least will give us a scan sheet for everything so i do like that on whatnot I would be I very surprised that if they'll fix that. Though. I'm sure they'll have a scan sheet probably within the next couple months. The yeah. way they're, I'm sure. Yeah. sure. They're, they're, they're really hands on. Oh. So, whoops. Okay, I have these now. I think I finally have. have yeah, I unstarred this one by accident. Um, <laughs> SoCal says late to the show. I sell 90 percent sports and non-sports cards on eBay. So. Carrie, I think you're probably the best one for this. Are there any other platforms you feel are worthwhile for cross-posting cards? Well, using like a cross-posting like like app like Vindu or List Perfectly, Code American Arbitrage, um, 30, I think. (laughs) I'm not sure what it is. Um, But um, Mercari, there's a lot of people with massive stores on Mercari. Um, The ones, there's some that aren't available on like the cross-listing services. ComC is a really good one. If you have like under, I would say like under 20, $30 $30 cards. Com C could be massive. Um, if to send cards in, their app is really nice and they sell stuff through eBay as well. So I would recommend Mercari and um, Com C. And then OG uh, Treasures, he was talking about selling cards on Poshmark, which I didn't know you I saw do. that. There's not a lot of competition, I bet. So that might be a good way as well. It's crazy. I get a lot of orders on Posh for stuff you wouldn't think, and they're from guests. So Posh must be promoting it on Google. I bet that's how people are finding it. And then they they buy it and it just shows Poshmark guests. So they saw my ad, you know, for my Poshmark listing. They're not a Poshmark user and they just bought it on Posh. I have that happen like quite a bit. Let's see. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Jay Pickett says, I sell vintage stuff. I don't have a store on eBay, but I'm considering the starter or basic subscription. How does having a store increase your sales? What allows you, if I remember right, I mean, I've had a store since the very beginning. I think from the day one of starting eBay, I had a store. But I imagine it lets you do the um, sales, which is the big thing. And then it gives you more listings and everything. I would recommend a store for almost anybody who's reselling as a side hustle. If you're just selling things occasionally around the house and you're not really doing it for any more than that, then there's, there's no need. But if you're reselling and trying to make money at it consistently, whether it's a small amount or a big amount, I would say at the very least have a basic store. Um, I, I think yeah. I've had the, whatever the $28 store, we've had that for forever. We probably need the next one. We haven't even upped it, but um, I would recommend it for sure. I would say store for sure. Yeah. Store gives you credibility. Um, also to allows you to run sales and discounts. You can't do if you didn't have a store. And uh, I, I prefer it. And plus, you get a shipping discount, which is the coolest thing. Every quarter, you get a shipping coupon that you can use. By the way, people use your shipping coupon if you haven't used it. You Not, for the, Not yeah, for the lowest. Not for the lowest. But the 
not for like the what it was like the six ninety nine, but if you have the one twenty one and up or whatever it is, you can get a shipping disc. Uh, you get a, a coupon to get free shipping supplies every quarter. And depending on your store, like I get a fifty dollar one. I think the store below me is a twenty five dollar one. Uh, so it just varies, but I mean there are benefits to it. I'm gonna say I don't think having a store increases your sales at all, um, unless you're running sales which is a feature you can't do without a store. Because if you have good stuff, I don't think it matters if you have a store or not. It's going to sell whether you have a store or not. There are yes. benefits to having it, but I don't think that, I don't think it increases the sales at all. We had a question about the district. Is it for international sellers or is it just? Uh, so district is Canada and the U.S. only okay. currently. Okay. There for sellers and buyers. Um, and I answered, if you can cross post the district, they can import your eBay listings, but the, none of the cross posting services I'm aware of cross post the district. Yeah. Not yet. That I know of. I'm sure, I'm sure that'll happen though. It's still new. Yeah. yeah. Angela wants to know if we mention flaws in our titles, I don't ever have room. I assume the condition area is for that. Yeah, yeah, the condition area is for that. We occasionally do it depending on if there's been an issue in the past. Like, say you have a like a, a DVD VHS player kind of thing, and it's not working. Sometimes I'll put like C description or you know not working parts only in the title because people don't read. Um, so that just depends. But for the most part, if there's like a scratch on a card, I'll just put that in the description. It's not really a big deal. Yeah, I'll, in the title, I'll always put uh, like asterisks and then read description or just read yeah. if I if I'm already short on letters, and then down there I make sure I put the flaw in bold, and then even reiterate it a little bit if there's you know just to make sure they know, but you know you still have returns. You want to over critique your item always. Yes. On yeah. You want to overdo it so that there's no question. And usually, if you're doing it right, they get the item and go, "Oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be." Yeah, yeah I if it's a especially with electronic, I always put non-working or four parts in, in my title um, when I can do that. Um, I would also another trick I do too, the, just to say if your, your item has any type of damage or stuff like that, um, I do the asterisks and put read in my title, kind of like Don does. But one trick that I would do for your, in your description, I always set my last photo to the photo that has the either the stain, the rip, the damage on them, because then I'll put in my description, please see last photo. Because if you just put just have a random photo in there and you have 10 photos, the buyer may overlook and go through this. But if you're real specific, say look at last photo, buyer can go right to the last photo and see the damage on it. So I always do that in my in my description anytime. So it makes it clear so that there's there's no if, if they try to say, oh, you didn't put that in there. No, it's clearly in there. Look at last photo. You can go look at the picture of the last photo. So. So I personally, with vintage and collectibles, would say erase something in the title. I think you need to have either read in capital letters at the end or C. I put either read or C. I will delete something else if it has a serious flaw. Because what happens is they get it and say, hey, I didn't know this. I write them back and screenshot and circle where it says read. And then I circle where it says in the description what the flaw was. And I say, I take free returns. You're happy to send it back, but please do not use the reason it's not as described because it is. So I don't want them to open an INAD because I'm not going to return their original shipping. And you can fight that with eBay and not return the shipping and say, this said read in the title. I'm not returning their shipping because the flaw was clearly notated. And eBay will also side with you on something like that as well. If you have read and see and their complaint is exactly about what you talked about. So mm -hmm. make sure, I, it, I'd say make sure you have it. Um, the condition areas for that, but most people don't read. So I'm hoping by putting read, in the title, but they still don't all, they still don't all read it, unfortunately. Um, Noni has a good question and I'll tell you, I don't feel knickknacks as that niche down. So I, I don't feel this. So Carrie and Rod with Dibbed It, since it's niche down, do you feel it's more competitive with pricing? 
I haven't noticed it yet because we definitely don't have enough items to even have reached a point where we have like similar listing. Well, we will have similar listings as like a couple people have GI Joes, but the same character. Uh, it, it hasn't happened. I don't know if we'll ever have that many sellers where it will be an issue. It may, but um, I, I think the cool thing about niching down, especially on on district, is it allows people to know exactly what they're going to get when they come into your site. What kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and the cool thing about like Dibdit is it's literally me, Kevin and Dave's personality. It's like the things we love. It's literally, that's the whole process of it. It's nostalgic stuff that matters to us. There would be no sports cards in there if it weren't for me. Trust me, they don't like sports cards. And, you know, we probably wouldn't have as many wrestling figures and stuff like that if it weren't for Kevin. So it, it's, it's a personification of what we enjoy. Um, and, and that may happen, uh, but I feel like if played right and if we grow it and, and, and it's successful, you may be able to get a premium a la Etsy on some of these items. But who knows? We don't know exactly how it's going to go um, long term, but yeah. that's a good question. I definitely yeah. agree with you. It's, it's definitely it's in the baby stages of the platform right now and what you guys are really trying to accomplish with. But I will say someone who specializes in pop culture, someone who... I mean, look, I mean, I have a whole cabinet right behind me full of the wrestling figures and Edie's toys, stuff like that. I've, I've found more interesting items on there than I did on eBay because it's so niched down. I found so many unique items I didn't even know existed. So that is the one cool thing about that platform, especially when people are niching down on there. You have a lot of, you know, because of eBay, you're, you're searching for everything at one moment where this one is, you guys are really just dialed in on on those certain things and i would say when i go through there i look at the different categories i'm like i never know this existed this is super cool so i think people would be able to get a premium on them because you know it only takes one buyer to really want that one item you know when you come across you see these unique items you're not going to find these items a lot of different places so i think that's one of one advantage that they uh, those this individual platforms are going to have all right, Jay Pickett sent a $5 super chat. Then we have one last question for the panel. There are two for me that I can answer super fast and we'll have got through all the questions, which is amazing. So here is your dolphin, thank you. Do you want the dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time he comes over here when we're playing that. <laughs> All right, Jennifer wants to know what are three things you wish you knew before you started reselling on eBay? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I wish I would have known how important like patience was because I think you get really excited when you start reselling. I know I was, and I just didn't know anything. I didn't know what sold yet, um, but curiosity is huge with that. I would, I would say... I wish I knew how important curiosity was because it's really the driving factor for being a good eBay reseller is you see something, especially when you're new and you look it up. It's a lot of looking stuff up and it's a lot of just being patient with understanding you're going to buy stuff and it's not going to sell. And that's always, that's not always a negative because you learn from that. Not only what doesn't sell, but maybe what type of items don't sell. Or maybe when you're looking that up, you find, oh, this within this niche, this item sells and whatnot. Also, um, gosh, a uh, third thing is you just, um, I wish I would have probably doubled down on what I love selling that quicker than what I did. Um, I sell everything. We're everything sellers, me and Don, but we definitely focus on what we enjoy. You know, Don loves plushes. I love sports cards and that's where a majority of my focus goes. And that's how I think eBay is a place where I sell the stuff I love. But I go to thrift stores, so when there's something, you know, outside of what I love but that I know is valuable, I'll pick that up as well, although I'm not, like, always digging deep in those sections. So those are, those are three things I, I wish I probably would have known before I started. I would say uh, knowing that stuff's not going to sell real fast, it's, you're not going to get your money back after you just spent most of it over the weekend at a yard sale and a flea market. You can't expect your money to come right back. Uh, when I first started eBay – I also had to learn about the shipping. Uh, I sold a bunch of items when I first started eBay and I had no idea what I was doing with the shipping and all that. Um, and the, the third thing is, is what scared me when I did do the eBay at first was when something arrived broken and how to handle it. So that was scary for me. The whole experience was scary in the beginning. I, I, I was 
should have been more patient and did some more research and, and learned a little bit more about eBay before I just jumped right into it and scared the crap out of myself. I would say sell through rate, sell through rate, sell through rate. Just because you find an item that sold for 50 bucks and then, you know, that might just been a one-off. Someone just needed it immediately. doesn't mean that I'm going to sell for 50 bucks. Yeah. You know, that's my biggest thing. So I bought a lot of items in the very beginning that I saw that, that, that sold on eBay, but didn't take a look at how many items were actually listed on eBay. And I ended up getting a lot of very long tail items or very, or spending or wasting a lot of time listing items that were just going to sit around. Um, also, too, is I think in the very beginning, I tried to list everything for top dollar, not knowing any better when I first started. And I think that was a big mistake because in this industry that you want to keep your cash flow going, it's very important that it's okay to take, you know, 70 cents on the dollar to get that money come in that you can make another purchase to buy other items. So you want to get those items flowing. And I, you know, I put everything for, for top of the market price. And then I found myself getting more and more inventory sitting and becoming stale. So that was a big mistake I made in the very beginning. And also, you know, Kerry talked about niching down in the very beginning. He wished he would have done more of that. I am an everything seller. I, I did the opposite. I niched down too much. So when I went sourcing, I, I left a lot of things behind that could have made me money that I should have picked up. So I wish in the very beginning I would have took a little bit more chances, not saying go out and buy massive collections of things, but buying some one-off items to test the market sooner on what I like. Because if I was going out just looking, say, for bobbleheads at a, at a yard sale, I might go to 10 yard sales before I find one bobblehead. I'm wasting a lot of time sourcing, looking for specific items that you know I want to sell, where if I was just open my eyes and, and find things that took a little bit more value, I could have really been f taking that money, selling those other items, find other items or categories that maybe I just didn't know I like to sell in or find things that I hate to sell in. You know, so it does, it works both ways. So I, I wish I would have did that earlier. Um, once I changed that going forward in my business, it was a, just a game changer. Yeah. So stuff that I know now that I didn't know then, like photo room or a photo editing app, I think are big time, like, asset to my business because it makes the photos look so much better and i you don't have to worry as much about making them perfect because you can edit the lighting and things like that that would be one two is i wish i would have known how much space i needed because with the mm. money i've spent on shed i have a 30 by 50 barn that i could have had a really nice big warehouse for cheaper <laughs> than the sheds. So if I would have done it all at once, um, so I would say, and people ask me like what size shed, get the biggest friggin' thing you can afford. That would be like if you're getting a shed in your yard. Um, and I could have, like I said, I could have had a really, really nice large warehouse space versus having to go to four places. So I wish I had known that. Um, and the other is, and this is still something I have to reiterate to myself and Rod's like kind of explain it for me. A lot of my longer tail items are from lots because I buy so many lots, but I wish I had been a little more picky with sell through rate. Now they're listed. I'm already storing them. I don't care. I'm going to leave them there. But with newer items, I'm being a little pickier. I'm lotting items up to get higher average sales price. So if I have a $10 item, but I have three items like it, I'm going to put them together for a $30 sale, you know, so I don't have as many low, low dollar sales. And yeah, I think, I think that's about it. All right. Sapphire yeah, label printer. Label printer really oh yeah. Key. Label printer is, is key. Um, <laughs> we were taping them on for so long. Oh, me too. One nightmare. One nightmare. <laughs> 10 years <laughs> before we got a, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sapphire asked how many kittens. So you guys saw one in here. So we actually, we had three cats for five years and we had no intention on getting any more cats. We had three indoor, outdoor. And then in my rental, a pregnant cat was abandoned and she had three kittens. And of course, everybody in the family liked different kittens. So we kept all three kittens and the mama cat, but they are all fixed now and they are all outdoor cats as well so we went from three to seven not on purpose but they're fixed and we have 11 acres and there's plenty of room so but they are all fixed no more no more kitty cats so i don't foster intentionally and it's with reason because then they would all live here permanently like those kittens did because i didn't get rid of any of them 
Miss Barbara said, uh, my source for packing tape is American Bubble Boy. I forgot. I'll give away two tape guns next week. I forgot to give away a tape gun. Joel gave me tape guns to give away. I'll give away two next Tuesday. So remember that. Um, and my promo code is the nurse flipper. That is my promo code almost everywhere, all caps. That is my code. Okay, one last one because we're getting through all of them. Do you think Instagram is really good for promoting yourself or do you th or is it for something else? They said they're not very good at tech. So is Instagram something you would recommend to promote yourself? Oh, yeah. It's my yes. favorite site overall because it does a little bit of everything. We really didn't do Instagram until we did one for our business uh, years and years ago. And I didn't do a personal one until like four years ago. And it's... Uh, it's changed. I mean, it's a big part of, of, of a lot of the growth that we've had um, over the last couple of years. So I would definitely suggest Instagram. And also, it's a great place to, to know what's going on in the community. Somebody was talking earlier about what's hot on eBay next year. Instagram, there's people all just like YouTube, but it, there's more text and there's more, you know, shorter videos and stuff like that. It's a little bit more common. So you can learn a lot about what's hot, what, what's present in the, in the community at the moment. So I would suggest doing it for sure. Yeah, Instagram is one of the better ones, but you also have the Facebook and uh, TikTok and all that. TikTok's my favorite, um, but um, Instagram's probably one of the better ones. Put it this way, Facebook was the most popular social media site out there, and they bought Instagram. So that's going to tell you something right there, that if Facebook is going out and buying that, then there's something that you should be on to promote. So if you're on Facebook, you should definitely be on Instagram. They're both great tools. But I think any social media site, it doesn't matter. Anything you, you do to get your name out there or your products out there is only going to be beneficial to you. What's not going to be beneficial is sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, so I didn't have Instagram until I started YouTube. So I was like super late to the party. I'm not like overly... Before I started my YouTube channel, I was not overly a social media person. I like had Facebook and that was it. Um, I've tried TikTok. I might try and start doing shorts again and throwing them out to all platforms. I need, I keep saying I'm not good at it, but you can learn things and I need to tell myself that. It's just like YouTube. It's just, it's, a, it's I can the same grind, it but out. it's different. There you go. Yeah. See, I haven't had the luck. I, I haven't posted a lot that's something i really want to try and get a handle on next year that's going to be one of my goals is like doing better at promoting in different places like kevin sandy sold them and i i posted in the beginning and i haven't posted since so i really i need to get better at that but yeah, yeah so we got through has, all the questions we got through all the questions. has that magic claim feature so for, it's for beautiful. us, it's dibs. Like, so if you type in dibs for any item that we put like in our story that says claim it, what basically it'll it'll directly send you. The it puts item it in their cart out. when they click it. Yeah, so, it, it fills up the cart and you click on it and you pay for it. It's pretty wild. So what's, what's, what's cool is you can actually share it from any of the knickknacks or dib it and share it to your Instagram and people can claim it and it sends them the thing. So and, that's Facebook. Really cool. and Facebook. And Facebook. Yeah. And Facebook, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to make Carrie and Dawn big and then me and Rod will tell you what we've got going on and who's on next week. Here is Carrie. Hey, thank you guys. Um, appreciate everybody. Um, you can find me. I'm everywhere. American <laughs> Arbitrage on uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Snapchat. I don't know. A whole bunch of places. American <laughs> Arbitrage cards in all those places. If you guys like sports cards. Trash to Cash podcast, if you got nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing better to do, I guess. You can go there. And the AI Picks podcast, you can be one of 20 weekly viewers to our movie podcast that nobody listens to. So that's where you can find <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Here's Dawn. Yes. Uh, thank you for having me. This has been fun. Um, I'm in all of American Arbitrage's videos. You'll see me more than you see him. Um, I had a good time. Try out Dibbed It. <laughs> I think uh, Kevin said he's going to pay me if I say that. Yes, we did 10 so. mentions. We're getting paid. Yes. <laughs> also, trash the cash. Trash the cash. Kevin says I get a bonus if I do that, too. Carrie, what about your meetup? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We have the trash trash to cash winter bash in Orlando, Florida next month. Next month. Um, there's tickets what? still available. I think we have like 15, 20 tickets left, something like that. And we're going to go mini golfing. We're going to have like a big get together and eat. And we'll probably go thrifting and do all sorts of fun stuff as well. And the tickets are 150 bucks. 150, and, uh, yes, 150, I probably should mention that. 150 yeah. for 
It's a three-day event. You're doing a, a nice steakhouse. You guys are doing pizza. Fuzi is included in some of the events. Miniature golf. It's all included for the ticket price. We should make Rod big since he's saying it all. I don't know more about this than you do. Like, come <laughs> on, man. Like, come you know on. me, man. You know me, man. Come I need on. a good pitch for me. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, I dropped the brand new video day, guys. I bought a ten thousand uh, dollar Disney collection. Um, yes, I'm now known as a Disney guy. I know. Um, so go check out that video there. It's number one YouTube video right now, trending for me. So go check that one out. I am going live tomorrow night because I have too much Disney crap. So come see me on whatnot tomorrow night. Do uh, now you're gonna be Disney. like me. Every Disney like games. large collection I buy, yeah. I become like the specialist on That's license plates. And it's, Harley Pins. It's all in the comments. It was you're the Disney King. That's what I've been getting today. So um, I I am gonna be doing a giant whatnot sale in the beginning of January. I am gonna be giving away Nintendo Wii. I'll be giving away a bunch of other items. So go bookmark that show. And I just hit three thousand followers on whatnot. So I'm doing a massive free show. Me and Mrs. Punchin will be doing live on a free giveaway show in uh, January. So guys, go bookmark their shows and whatnot. But also, too, I hope each and every one of you guys have a great New Year's because this is going to be our last show for the end of the year. Right, Kat? Yeah, yeah. This is the last, the last one of the year. Of the year. Uh, Carrie, where can they get tickets to the Trash to Cash event? I'm trying to think what the exact website name is. But if you go on our latest Trash to Cash video, the link should be at the very top. There's Picker a link website. in there. Is, Kevin, oh, is it Can they get yeah, it? Yeah, you can get them on his, on his website. Yeah, and pick up Look, a sticker. See, Rod, right there. Rod knows every. Rod, uh, Kevin Rod needs a bonus tonight. Too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off the podcast. It's good. It was good while it lasted. Um. <laughs> all right. So I know, right? See, I, you gotta you gotta pay Rod. Um. <laughs> next week we have Gino's Fines, who is the man behind most of my super chats videos. And we have Sandy from My Flipping Van Life, so we, that will be fun. I will be doing a whatnot and a knickknack show sometime. I haven't been feeling good for over a week, um, so I don't know when. Um, hopefully this weekend or the beginning of next week. I just got in a bunch of new Native American jewelry and sterling, and then... What else? I will have a video out either tomorrow or Thursday for high dollar earrings. Somebody requested that. So Kevin says go to his website. I appreciate you guys coming. Last show of the year. This show has been on almost four years. We have missed awesome. one Tuesday, guys. One Tuesday we have missed in four years. Um, so looking forward to another year. I hope you all have a good new year. Please don't drink and drive. I know I sound like an ad, but please, please don't drink and drive by somebody who's been hit by a drunk driver before. Please, please. Actually, twice. I've been hit by a drunk driver twice. Um, please don't, don't drink and drive. Walk or get a ride or something. I appreciate you all, and we will see you next week. Carrie, Dawn, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you guys for watching. Bye, guys.